Cassini abandons Huygens on Titan and heads for another moon, which scientists believe could be its greatest conquest, Enceladus. Cassini continues exploring the Saturnian system. In its sights, the moon Enceladus. Covered in ice, Enceladus is one of the brightest objects in the solar system. Cassini's cameras capture these detailed images of this dazzling, frozen world. Its ancient, wrinkled surface is made up of fractured plains, craters, and folded mountains. But as it skims past, Cassini's magnetometer registers some kind of disturbance. This is the actual recording. The moon creates fluctuations in Saturn's immense magnetic field. But how? The magnetometer detects gas coming from the moon's surface. Spheres don't do that. They distribute themselves uniformly around an object. The team is mystified. What could create a strange localized atmosphere? Cassini moves closer. The spacecraft captures this stunning image. Giant geysers on the surface of the moon appear to throw out huge plumes of vapor. The unidentified gas blasts over 400 miles into space. Cassini's spectrograph analyzes the vapor of the jets. It contains water. This discovery is completely unexpected. Could liquid water exist on this frozen moon? Cassini zeroes in on an area of the moon covered with cracks. Scientists are baffled. What generates these pockets of heat? Enceladus's orbit is elliptical. Its distance from Saturn varies over time. One theory is, as it passes close to Saturn, its crust flexes. Then as it moves away, it relaxes. Friction at the fault lines generates heat perhaps enough heat to melt ice within the faults. Melt ice to create liquid water. The prospect of liquid water on one of Saturn's moons demands further investigation. The first step is to determine the exact composition of the plumes. Mission Control fly Cassini just 30 miles above the moon's wrinkled surface, passing through the geyser's outer edge. The results are completely unexpected. The plumes contain water vapor, nitrogen, and even simple organic molecules. Scientists now believe that Enceladus has conditions that can sustain life. Living organisms could survive around the warm faults that sit at its southern pole. The latest theories suggest that the faults in the terrain here may stretch down to a subterranean sea. This would be a dark world devoid of sunlight, but life may still have emerged here. On Earth, primitive organisms thrive in similar hostile and extreme environments. Scientists speculate that the same could be true of Enceladus. It's a tantalizing possibility. If there are living things on Enceladus, the implications would be profound. If we could demonstrate that 
the origin of life, Genesis, had occurred twice independently, then as far as I'm concerned, the spell is broken. We could safely infer life had occurred an astronomical number of times throughout the cosmos in its 13.7 billion year history. So this is why it is such a pressing question for us. Cassini shows us that life may be possible on alien worlds.